E fitu wiki kwa pahure i te haurutu tanga a ruau moko i te rohe o o tautahi. He ai ki ngā kōrero roki roki a te Māori, ko papa tua nuku te kōkara kei raro, ko rangi nui te pāpara kei runga. Ko tā rau e te maiti kāre no kia whānau mai, te pūtake tanga mai o ngā rū whenua katoa. I haere a Jody Ihaka ki o tautahi mō ngā rā e toru, kia ki te atu aia e pēhe ana ngā uri o ngā itahu. At 5am on September the 4th, a 7.1 magnitude earthquake rocks Canterbury to the core. Ngaitahu reacts immediately. And today, Mark Solomon says Ngaitahu remains in close contact with the city's leaders, the government and other community agencies coping with the disaster. He says Ngaitahu takes its responsibilities seriously to serve and support not only its own tribal members, but also the wider Canterbury community. As a people, what do you think you've lost? I think we've gained. Yes, we've, we've lost material, but the fact and the way that people have come together, the way that people are supporting each other, it's a gain. It just reinforces our phenomena amongst each other. For Ngaitahu, the road to recovery is driven by its leaders. From grassroots to the beehive, there's community worker Birdie Milner. The communication's been amazing, and Fano, since that day, have been keeping tight communication. And a lot of our Fano too, are up and about and helping out wherever they can. Māori Party MP Rahui Katene. People think once the earthquake is over, that's it. You know, we can relax, we can clean up, we can get on with our lives. But in fact, these aftershocks are just causing so much damage that, uh, and, and fear and confusion. And Ngaitahu leader, Mark Solomon. First of all, we had to ascertain how bad it was for our people. And as I said earlier, we've contacted around 95% of all of our elders from the epicentre into the square out towards uh, Tuahiwi. Um, about two out of every ten have, have serious damage to their home. We ne- haven't come across anyone yet that's had any injuries. Um, it's about getting the information out. A lot of people have been talking about why aren't the marais open. Well, we've had a massive earthquake. Every one of the marais had to be checked out structurally before we could allow people on. It's three days since the quake and none of the iwi marae are open for business. It's still my all to Manaki people. Yeah. As a politician, what is your job right now? Mainly to find out where the, the, the help is needed and to get, make sure that the help is getting to those people. With more than 400 aftershocks in the first week, this whānau was too scared to move. Wanting to go back to Australia mm. has been talked about. And, you Anywhere know, for, for, but here. Um, I mean, obviously, if this keeps going for a month, that's like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it, it, the aftershocks, know. you just never know. If you have a look, at any time, they could have been killed and still could be. And because what they were seeing on TV was things so much more drastic that they thought was drastic, and they just thought that was OK to have a crack chimney because I don't think they realised the seriousness of having a damaged home and staying in a damaged home. Māori been affected by this? Oh look, they've been fantastic. They've been taking in their families, they've been going out and feeding them and, and you know, really looking after themselves and, and after each other and it's been fantastic. You go to the wealthy centres, there are not a lot of Māori going to those wealthy centres because, you know, whānau are taking care of each other. I think all that's happened is that Māori have acted as whānau. They've just opened where how people have to get out of a home family opens up their home, come in here. And we're doing it everywhere, just as all the others of Canterbury are doing. Um, in an adversity like this, the good comes forward with most people. And that's what we've seen everywhere. Farno are looking after Farno. Going 
on here at the moment because we've had army go past a fire truck, police. There's a helicopter buzzing around there. Yeah. It is surreal, don't it's, you think? It's busy. Um, <laughs> I mean, Main Street, we've just changed all the traffic management, so we've now got it two ways and, and establishing, a, well, I suppose, a sense of normality to the, to the community, and that's good for the community as well. Uh, as far as the helicopter goes, I think it might be another TV camera. Oh, no! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> People are generally quite positive. Um, you know, they'll come out and and help us at times. Or we had a lovely lady yesterday bring us pikelets that she'd been baking. So nice. That's quite. You know, I think you see any us and the civilian contractors as well are all appreciated um, by the locals. I keep faith with me. You know, you pray. And, and to give yourself that bit more confidence in yourself. And, you know, making people safe. No one can, can predict what's going to happen when there's going to be another earthquake. Um, geologists might say, oh, this is, this is a trend or this is a pattern. This might happen, this may happen. But I think the only person that would know would be Papa Tuanuku. How are we maintaining... Um, the life force for Papa Tuanuku. How are we actually doing that? So maybe her uri, Rua Umoko, is giving us a message. And I think the message should be heeded worldwide. Well, I hope everybody else in, in Christchurch are safe and happy as we are. Yeah, my heart goes out to them. Mm. Kia ora. Fantastic story. Kia kaha koutou o ngai tahu.